Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Oklahoma City. I'm Marshall Sycliffe. I'm in the booth with Jacob Van Lunen, and we are in the finals. Pierre Mondon on the left. He's playing against John Pennock on the right. And a quick start here. Solid two drop from Pierre. And he's going to start attacking right away. We have a forest-based mirror here. One of them has opted for black as their secondary color, the other blue. What do you think about this matchup, JVL? I think Pierre Mondon has the ability to go over the top as the game progresses. John really needs to go all in on a Centaur Battlemaster uh, in the earlier turns of the game if he wants to take this away. Pierre's uh, late game is just pretty absurd. He has a lot of green devotion. He has the ability to uh, use that devotion to power out things like Nylia, mm -hmm. God of the Hunt. And uh, he can create a lot of mana to pump his creatures with things like Karametra's Acolyte once he gets all of that devotion. Okay. You know, one thing that we've seen from Pierre in the earlier rounds of the of the top eight here is that he's got a few creatures with death touch and those are very very good against cards like centaur battlemaster yeah so another card that we haven't seen yet from pierre mm -hmm. that is in his deck that will affect the late game a lot is abhorrent overlord oh wow he has one of those too yes we were talking about what we thought the most powerful rares were in the set, and that, that was the one that came to my mind first uh maybe there's something else like elspeth or something yeah, i think elspeth probably number one just give me an important overlord. I'll be fine. I like flying <laughs> tokens. What do you want from me? All right. So uh, Nylea's Asp here. A turn early thanks to a Voyaging Seder. So a 4-5 into an empty board. And it looks like John is really struggling for blue mana here. And he it's could be... It's actually just on time because uh, Pierre happened to miss a land drop. Oh, he did? Yes. Okay. All right. There's a Mist Cutter Hydra. It's going to be a 4-4. Can't be countered, doesn't matter. Does have haste, mm, probably doesn't matter either, since he's not going to be attacking with it. Send the turn back to Pierre, and this is going to be a big turn. If Pierre can find a way to kill that thing, maybe a sip of Hemlock. Oh, have a drink of that, Miss Cutter Hydra. Down it goes, drops John Panic down to 10. And then down to 5, or down to 4, rather. Yeah. Yep, and now down to 4 after the attack here, so... Things are looking really awful for the for the early start here for John Pennick. Does he have anything that he can do here? And he does that have a Nemesis Immortal. That is just good enough, at least if everything stays exactly the same way it is, to not die this next turn. Hoop, and there's a land. That's exactly what Pierre needed here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so that he can just safely attack with his Asp and... Uh, I mean, he can also not lose it in combat. Send in the uh, dry and just get those two points, putting his opponent at two. Yep. But now he gets to keep his asp as well, right? Yeah, and then he's going to have a gigantic monster of a snake. Into uh, what will be a top decking John Pennick. Yeah, and I mean, he'll also have you know, two different lethal threats on board. Then. That's right. He also has the op option here, if he wants to try to get him down to one, he can lose the asp and attack with his Voyaging Seder, but uh, I think I like just sending in with the two creatures there. I don't know what he, had his, what he has in his hand either, though, so there could be something. Yep, there you go. I like this play. Makes the obligatory block. Activate Monstrous. Thing is huge. Eight now. Eight power. An eight, nine snake. Yep. More importantly, though, no blue mana. Not enough action here, and John Pennock is going to scoop it up for game one. Now, he's not done yet. He's got to win back-to-back -back games. No small feat. So, uh, we, another thing we were talking about before we went off to uh, take a break, or bef before we uh, started talking during the finals, uh, Pierre Mondon, a former roommate of Magic card designer Sam Stoddard. Yeah, I, I read that. I, I read that uh, that Sam had posted that he's a yeah. Sam's a developer in R and D now. <coughs> and you said that uh, Pierre has been playing for quite a while now. Yeah, um, I was uh, from actually your chat with him. 
you know, I was looking around on social media, and he's he's apparently like a pretty big part of the, you know like the game's history as far as you know you know terms go. Things like calling a mistake a punt. Mm -hmm. That apparently comes from Pierre Mondon. Dude, I use that. Yeah, we all use that all the time. Like my family member, my girlfriend uses that now. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a yeah, funny story I, I about like, that. Yeah, like my, everybody because, I know uses that because I say it Yeah, so much. and so I got yeah. her to say it, and it's so <laughs> self-explanatory. If he really is the originator, the guy's a genius. He's a yeah. language genius. Because yeah. I got, my girlfriend actually thought that everybody said that. And I said, no. And so she went to her work, and she asked, like, three different people, if I told you this, they're like, I don't, you mean football? And she's just like, no way. <laughs> like, it was that clear to her what it meant that she just yeah. thought that that's what people said. Interesting. He's a wordsmith. He is. Uh, take a quick look here. Magic the Gathering Pro Tour Theros. It's one week away. Uh, it's, it's actually less than that. It's starting yeah. on Friday. Somehow, I am in Oklahoma City right now and must be, and this goes for you too, by the way, Jake. We must yes. be in Dublin ready to go on Friday morning. Standard Theros Draft, October 11th through 13th. Please do come join us. You can hashtag PTHS. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> It'll be all on twitch.tv slash magic, along with dailymtg.com for all the written and extra coverage. You can also find the link to the stream there. You can see it starts Friday at 9 a.m. Dublin time. That's 4 a.m. on the East Coast. And uh, we are, I can't wait to bring you this. This, this set is sweet. It's going to be a brand new standard format with all new cards. This is going to be one to remember, I think. Super teams have united. Mini satellite teams floating around trying to come up with the, with the brew to break it. And uh, it's going to be a really great event. I'm ready. All comers, come on. <laughs> there we get a good shot of John Pennock, the doctor. Hoping to, start to find some blue mana in this game. All right, here we go. Opening seven. John, back up against the wall here. If he loses this game, he's out. Pierre is our champion. He needs to equalize to have a shot here. Pierre's taking a look at his seven now. That indicates to me that John has kept. Both players have kept. All right, so we won't have a mulligan fest here. That's nice to see. One card, one card per turn, please. Well, he caught it. Yeah. It's a wise thing to do to put the card down before you draw that's, it. Just that's in case two one stick of the together. main reasons you do it. Yeah, and you know that's it's a way to prevent game losses, especially in something as high pressure as a, the finals of a GP. It's pretty important to prevent those types of things. All right, so Nessie and Courser versus, well, another 3-3. This one's a little bit slower. Yeah, I mean, it gives him a little bit of a bonus. Just going to jump him up to 22 here. Disciple of Nylea. Let's see. Ooh. So Pierre does have the god in hand, but uh, probably going to wait a little bit until he gets more devotion. Yeah, it doesn't really do a ton here necessarily. Also, the god's going to be angry because the disciple's on the other side. Rebellious disciple. This disciple fighting against her god. It's pretty intense. It's not advisable. Yeah. Now he's he's actually going to offer the trade here though. This is interesting, and yeah, he, he gets away with it. Expect John to take the trade. Yeah, and he was correct. He was. What a wise young man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there's Nylea, God of the Hunt, and uh, John's going to take a chance to review it just to make sure that he has all the details right. These gods are pretty unique cards. They, they haven't printed cards like this before. They statically affect the board. They can become creatures, and they have activated abilities. So there's a lot going on with those. You get a look at Nylea there. 
a 6-6 six, six if she manages to, uh, to come visit her worshipers. And uh, right now, Pierre's <coughs> three green mana symbols away from making that happen. So he's, he's quite a few, he's quite a bit off from that currently. And there's plan A for John Pennick. This is, a lot of what his deck is based around is this uh, Centaur Battlemaster. Yeah, he really wants to get the Centaur Battlemaster active. Um, that's uh, probably the best thing his deck does. See, that's interesting. I'm, I'm surprised Pierre didn't offer the trade there with the uh, Nessian Courser. Get him for at least three points of damage. Then again. Yeah, I think he wants to try to keep, he wants to try to make Nylea a thing here. Is that the plan? See, I'm not sure. I, th I think he was thinking that uh, he might be able to double block. The, okay. Uh, and it actually looks like that's a pretty good plan here. Well, right now it's the... Uh, the, uh, the, the Voyage's Ordeal. End is going to blow him out, but... Yes. I mean, he can't really... Like, what, is he going to play around that? Like, he, his opponent just, like, made a massive 7-7, seven, seven, and now... He did, and he's going to get to draw two cards immediately off this ordeal. It's one of the tricks that you can do with, especially Centaur Battlemaster. It also works uh, just as well with the Staunch-Hearted Warrior. Get a couple of counters on just from targeting it, and the third one goes on when you attack, and you get to trigger that ordeal immediately. Yeah, I mean, as, as we've spoken about before, and here, here's the blowout with the Voyage's End. And yeah, he does double this block. This is likely the turn that John is... Yeah, this is this is the turning point of the game. This is when John is winning the game. Yeah, that's going to go back to his turn uh, to his hand. Excuse me, scry one. John Pennick takes a look at the top card. He is going to keep it, which is more bad news for Pierre. And now he has a huge threat that must be dealt with, and he's made Nylea, God of the Hunt, almost irrelevant. Yes. I mean, it is so far away from becoming a creature, and it really doesn't do a ton on defense. I mean, that pump can help, but it's so expensive that that's just not going to matter for a long time here. It's definitely not going to matter for at least some time. Yeah. All right, here's a slightly discounted Nemesis of Mortals. And yeah, normally one of the biggest things on the board, but... <laughs> it's dwarfed by the 7-7 seven -seven here, and he's had to tap out for that as well. So let's see what John can do. He's looking to shut the door on this game as quickly as possible. I think now he, he has enough of an advantage that he could even play the grinding game and win. Okay. I mean, his opponent has a pretty full grip and has a lot of death touch available potentially. Wow. <laughs> yeah, see, this is... Nylia's emissary. That's so it's gonna a 13-13 trample now? It's 6-9, 10-11-12. 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? 7, 13, yes. <laughs> With the trample. I mean, he could just take this hit, but that thing's not going anywhere. And now even a death touch creature off the top isn't going to solve this problem. Yeah, I mean, he needs to draw a land, sip of have a sip of hemlock, and then he needs John to basically have nothing. Nope, we're going to scoop it up. So that means that we are going to get a game three here in the finals. John Pennick versus Pierre Mondon. And uh, that was pretty decisive. That was very decisive. Plan A, w you know, we noticed that when he built the deck that, that a lot of the, his, his most raw power came from the Centaur Battlemasters. Those are the things yes. that could do the most impressive, huge things. And they did exactly that in that game. Yeah, in the quarterfinals when we watched John play, the center of Battlemasters were you know, a key part of his game in both of the games that he won. Here we see in game two, the game where he's able to get that center of Battlemaster online. That's when he t is able to take this game away. Take a look at the upcoming webcast schedule. We just talked about it a minute ago. Pro Tour Theros next week after that. Grand Prix Louis Louisville, then Grand Prix Antwerp, Valencia, Washington, D.C., which is Legacy, Grand Prix Albuquerque in standard, is standard, and Grand Prix Vienna, a couple weeks after that, is also standard. So some good old, some good old standard coming up. People love yeah. their standard. We've Lots also got standard. Modern, which is a format that I absolutely adore, and Legacy as well.
both players. Trying to decide the uh, correct sideboard iteration for this match here. All right, so this is it. One game. The winners are champion. The loser has to decide if uh, if he wants his friends to congratulate him or to console him. <laughs> Pierre uh, repeatedly looking at this. Um, I'm sorry, uh, rescue from the underworld, trying to decide whether or not he wants to sideboard it out. Does it look like it's coming out there? Is that the one he pulled? Yes, he did okay. in fact take it out. What is he going to bring in? The uh, perhaps a fade, fade into, into antiquity? antiquity? Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. He may have already put the card in. Okay. Yeah, Rescue from the Underworld, uh, it has a high potential, but it's kind of tricky to get it set up and make it work right. If your opponent has big tramplers sometimes, too, that really kind of makes that play a lot worse, the, the chump block or the block and the block and sack and, yeah. here. <laughs> Take a look at Pierre there. And there's John. You can see both, both of these players, very serious, very stoic. They are fully concentrated up here. You know, we, we've seen kind of the whole gamut here this weekend from very friendly, boisterous players that, you know, seemingly made friends and were talking throughout the entire match and all the way to the other end of the spectrum. And, and this is what you'd expect during the finals here. There's a lot of money, prestige on the line here. Becoming a Grand Prix champion is something that is uh, on a lot of Magic players' bucket list for sure. Um, take a look at the top 25 pro rankings. This is a little bit new if you guys haven't seen this yet. You can uh, see them and you can also see how these are determined on dailymtg.com. There's an article up there by Greg Collins. And uh, this is the list in its initial form. It's going it, to, it changes regularly. It'll change after this weekend. It will. Josh hutter Layton currently ranked number one. This is the top 25 pro rankings. Ben Starkey was here this weekend. Going down the list a little bit, Shuhei Nakamura also here this weekend. Eric Froelich at number nine here this weekend too. And you can take a look at the, the best, the top 25. Now, this is based on the last two years of competitive play here. Um, so you get a snapshot of who's been doing the winning lately, right? I yep. mean, you know, we were talking about it earlier, Jake. I, I wouldn't call this a who's the best player necessarily. That's a little bit, that's a much more complex subject to tackle. But who's been winning is certainly relevant, and, and that's what that's going to show you. And it's nice to have a list like that. It's nice to be able to s think to yourself, okay, um, well, like, who's the best, like, yeah. right now? And I know who's that it's, it's not necessarily the best, but... If you really had to, you know, answer a subjective question like that, that would be just about the best way to do it. Yeah. And I would, uh, if I was Josh Hutter Layton, I would definitely refer to it as a fact. You know. Oh, of course. I would I say, mean. well, I, I clearly am the best Magic player in the world. I have this list, which proves it. I would also remind my friends of it constantly. <laughs> the Raptor is quite good. I mean. <laughs> He's, He's certainly so, yeah, on the short list for actual just best. You know? yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably why he's number one on that list. There's a <laughs> lot of very good Magic players out there. On any given weekend, they can pop up and take that slot. Excited to see how well he does next weekend. Yeah. Should be good. That's one of the great parts about you know being qualified for the Pro Tour, is even if I do not do well, mm -hmm. I'll get an opportunity to be there and not have to work. I can just enjoy yes. you know, watching my favorite Magic players play and talking to them. Tell me what that's like. It should right. be wonderful. John Pennick, he has gone down to six here, and does he have a keep? He's on the draw. He's on the draw. He has two lands. They're both forest, but you know he could always just draw an island and get out of this. All right, well, there's a forest to kick things off. And another forest on Pierre's side, so he's got two, his both of his colors. No play here for Penning. And there's a three drop. What is it? All right, well, that's a solid start. 
It's a pretty good one. Yeah. That's a good, really good draw step there for John, too. It's a Nessian Courser. It's a 3-3 with flavor text, so it's just going to start chipping away at life totals. But like you mentioned, John Pennock just in time draws that island. Now, what does he have, though? I see he has an Agent of Horizons here. So he's going to play that out first and it's pass the turn a pretty good back. one. Now, if Pierre can just land drop here, I think he has a Leaf Crown Dryad, so he can, uh, he can make suit a pretty up. pretty big trump play here. That's a, you need some pretty big pants for a centaur, but I think the uh, I think the leaf can dryads up to the task. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's like horse pajamas. <laughs> All right, but it looks like he's <laughs> going to go for a little bit of a longer game plan here with the acolyte, and uh, he's going to be able to <clears throat> perhaps play two spells next turn. Yeah, and I mean, I definitely like that when you have you know those mana acceleration creatures. It's almost always correct to play them first, okay. especially in a limited format, because you just want to be able to use all of your mana to its maximum efficiency on every turn. Yeah. And that's how you, you know, gain that early tempo and end up being in the lead. You know, if you're the one putting pressure on your opponent, then they're the one blocking. And if mm -hmm. they're the one blocking, then they're usually the one who's losing because they're going to be having to do that while their mana's tapped and you're mm. attacking with your mana untapped and you have access to all of your tricks and everything. All right, John Pennock looks like he's going to offer up the trade here to kick things off. <coughs> he does. Any effects before blocks? No. No blocks. All right, take three. He's drawn another island here as well. Again, a pretty good draw step for him. It is. He can go two ahead. Lanners, got a bunch of lands now. Jump up to 23 with Nylia's Disciple here. And there it is. Okay, so John Pennock, a reasonable opener here. Three drop into four drop. Same thing on the other side of the table. But this is going to be the big turn here. That's a good draw step there for Pierre. He drew a Sedge Scorpion, which he's going to get to basically play for free. Yeah. I he mean, plays that out, it increases acolyte. his devotion up one, and now he taps the Acolyte to make even more, and he's got something big. That is cool. Wow, and a born overlord. And he is going to apply massive pressure to the board now. And now he's going to attack. He wanted to do this first so that he can make sure to get all these plays in. Normally you'd want to attack first and not let your opponent know what's going on. But he did it, he did it this way so that he has uh, the extra devotion just in case John decided to trade. Yep, and that, that is seven mana. All right. So a born overlord, we were just talking about it a minute ago. I said... Give me that over Elspeth, even though <laughs> I'd probably still rather take Elspeth because she only costs six. But still, a Born Overlord is that good. That card is amazing. And you're going to see why here as it is going to start tearing into John Pennock if he cannot find some way to deal with it really, really quickly. Now, Pierre must sacrifice a creature during his upkeep. So, you know, it's not all fun and games with a Born Overlord, but usually that thing can close out the game before, it, before that ends up mattering. Oh, yeah. I, I'm pretty confident that a 6-6 six, six flyer this early in the game is going to be able to close it out. But, I mean, if John can force uh, Pierre to make a couple trades, then who knows what will happen. Pierre sitting at 17 life, so John is going to have a hard time really putting big pressure on. And, and what would normally be a sweet play here, right? Yeah. Turn 5-5-5 five, five, five is... Just looks like it's just not enough right now, mainly because of the scorpion. Are we going to see the uh, the mana producer, the acolyte, on, or just one of the harpies? Um, I imagine he's just going to lose one of the harpies this turn, get okay. at least one more turn out of that acolyte. All right. Hit his draw step, draws a land for the turn, and then he can just dump his whole hand with this acolyte and then sacrifice whatever. This Abhorn Overlord going to come in for seven damage along with the, coming in with the Harpy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that said, Scorpion's a pretty big deal here. One of the ways that John can get back into this is if Pierre doesn't find a way to keep developing his board with creatures and John can use a bounce spell or two to make him actually sack the Abhorn Overlord or at least start sacking really relevant things. But uh, that means that Pierre's going to have to kind of not play creatures for a while. That's a tall order here. I mean, he, he is just a lot of creatures. Yes. It comes down to it. 
Is that the leaf crown dryad hitting up the harpy here? It is. Okay. I don't think that changes the clock significantly, does it? Six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen, twenty-seven. And five mana. Oh, three All mana. Right. There's a Seder Piper. Yep. And there's nine damage hitting you, John Panic. Drop you down to fourteen. Again, Sedge Scorpion doing work here. And uh, a Sedge Scorpion is mortal, and he's met his nemesis in the Nemesis of Mortals, <laughs> despite only costing one mana. They will both slay each other in epic fashion. All right, so here's a Ordeal of Thassa. And John just has to be miserable here, but here he goes. Attack with both. That is nine damage, but as you mentioned, the Sedge Scorpion is going to jump in front. All right, so those go down. You take four damage. Leaf Crown Dryad, though, pro providing some nice insurance to make sure that that Abhorrent Overlord stays on the battlefield and keeps on attacking. Yep. I think that's another um, Agent of Horizons here for John Pennick. All right. He's doing everything he can, but he's way behind thanks to that bomb rare cast it two turns early by Pierre Piper Mondo. to go away. It's either the Piper or the Mana Producer, and the Mana Producer and Acolyte blocks better, though the Piper can trade. Here's at 13. He's deep in the tank on this decision. He's got to be careful. I'm just going to go ahead and sacrifice this Harpy. Okay. Take out the Harpy. That's going to drop down the Leaf Crown. Dryad. He draws his card for the turn. He's top decking. He's got one card in hand. Mm -hmm. he's Panic also with one card in hand. Mm hmm so he wants to make sure that, I mean, ideally he would he would try to put John Pennock on a two-turn clock here, right? That's the plan. Yeah, so six in the air, and he needs to get one other damage in somewhere to, to make that two-turn clock a reality here. He's got to be careful, though. If he sends in with the Leaf Crown Dryad and it gets traded off, he gets his creatures whittled down. And, you know, if he gets down to too few, he might have to end up sacking that Aborn Overlord and... Uh, I mean, one That's way around one of the ways this he can is lose. that uh, he can make John block the Acolyte and then attack with all of his guys. Using the Seder Piper? Correct. Okay. And then by doing so, um, he doesn't lose any of his guys. All right. He's just going to ship the team. I mean, I think he feels like he's just not under that much. He's not. He doesn't feel like he can lose next turn, at least not in combat, even though... He will be getting hit for 8, but 8 and 13, there's a big gap there that's pretty tough to fill. Yeah. So he feels comfortable just bashing with the squad here. And, you know, this makes, this makes good sense here. John Pennock checks his hand. He knows he's up against it, but he knows he's not gone yet. That Aborn Overlord is going to keep eating away here at Pierre Mondon's board state. Remember, Pierre still has one card in hand. If it's a creature, that just buys him basically a full extra turn. Ooh, is this a Boon Seder? Is this a Boon Seder? It is a Boon Seder. Wow. Oof. Sweet draw on so many levels here. Is this lethal? 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, it puts so not quite one. lethal. But he can use it to save his Seder Piper if he wants. No, no, it doesn't save the It will actually Piper. won't save it. But, I mean, it just gets in for another four. It's pretty awesome. And it's a, and that insurance plan I was talking about, you know, it, yeah. 
it means that next turn he can sacrifice the uh, Leaf Crown Dryad and then still have a 4-4 that's ready to go. And this could put away the Grand Prix here. Pierre Mondon on the verge of becoming our champion here in Oklahoma City. There's a trade that happens right there. Yep. 6, 10, 11, 12, 13. John Pennock goes down to one. What does he draw? He He's got a, a grip tide in his hand, but he drew a forest. And that grip tide's just not going to be good enough next turn. Pierre can just. Oh, no. Pierre can't just crack with everybody because he's going to have to sacrifice a guy during his upkeep. Yeah. And then Panic can then trade with the Leaf Crown Dryad and survive, but then he has to worry about the fact that Pierre will then. Well, the Leaf Crown Dryad can get, is going to get turn. sacrifice. Is that what you're thinking, or do you think the no, Acolyte? No, the Acolyte's probably Okay, so the Acolyte's down. Well, he's going to sacrifice that. That way he gets to keep an extra threat here. Huh. And this should do it, right? Yeah. That's it. Pierre Mondon finished off the game. And you see him get up to the applause of his buddies. He's super excited. He is our champion here. Pierre Mondon, and we are actually going to get him over here right now, Jake, and I'm going to chat with Pierre for just a minute before we end the webcast here. Woo! Good stuff, huh? Welcome back. Yeah. Marshall Cycliffe here. This is Jake Van Lunen. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. great. I'm great. Yeah, we're on camera. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so great stuff down the stretch there. Yeah, incredible um, game. Huge, you know, and, and we saw it again. You know, you've been chatting this weekend about how much you like ramp in this format. And we saw Absolutely some love it. serious ramp and in the form of, uh, and, it, and it led to a serious card, a born overlord, which was able to basically take over that game and finish it off for Pierre. I'd be interested to ask Pierre Mondon what his favorite green common is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we might just do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm you gonna should probably have a, do that during your interview with I, him. I'm going to have a quick chat with him once he's ready. He's just, uh, yeah. you know, getting his picture taken and having money thrown at him and trophies. and yeah. That's how it it's works dangerous. here at the GP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's giving uh, you all in change. Yeah. So what do, you think about the, uh, what do you think about the format overall? Did anything change from when you first started the, the webcast uh, on Friday or on Saturday morning till now? Very much so. Mm -hmm. um, coming in, I, I really prefer drafting very aggressive white decks. Um, even in our draft last night that we did amongst coverage people, uh, you know, I 3 0'd with an extremely aggressive white deck. Uh, but after having the opportunity to get to talk to people like Ben Stark and having the opportunity to watch some of these great players draft, I have a lot more respect for the mid-range strategies. And you know, watching these games play out, I've been trying to envision myself playing one of the aggressive decks that I would have drafted against one of those decks. And it's just, you know, yeah, it seems very right. difficult. We're going to bring Pierre in right here. Let me All get right. the mic for you here, and then you can get up. Go ahead. Hey, congratulations. Congrats, man. All right, have a seat here. And we'll get you get a little quick interview with the champ here. This goes over your other ear there. If you can pull that down and let me turn this on. There we go. Pierre, congrats, man. You Thanks. did it. You are a Grand Prix champion. So talk us through those last few turns uh, uh, of, the, of the match in the finals there. Well, first, I'd like to thank my psychiatrist <laughs> as as I don't have a psychiatrist. That's a reference to Ron Artest when they won. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're the Ron Artest of the magic world? Or? No, no, You're not no. going to punch me. Either, right? no, well, depends what you ask. <laughs> no, I mean, I just, I sided in an extra land. Uh, he had a lot of uh, what would appear to be green creatures. I mean, I didn't see that many, but it, I mean, it was assumed. Um, probably some flyers. I had three of that. Uh, oh, yeah. Might as well show this thing for you there, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to make sure I hit six. Uh, I gambled a little. Game two, had a couple lands to draw a turn, uh, whatever. Uh, I snap kept a, a three lander, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, a five lander. Uh, he mulligan, got lucky, just drew that Arbor Overlord, played a turn five. Yeah, we Just saw that. getting lucky. So what do you think about ramp in the format? You had the Acolyte there that was able to power out that Aborn Overlord a couple of turns early, and it really just took over the game. Are you a big fan of ramp in this format? Dude, I don't know. That, that was my third draft. <laughs> yeah, that was the third. So all this, all today? 
Yeah. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I felt a little bit, you know, worried because it's the first time I didn't have polar cracking in my deck. Not not polar cracking, but you know. Oh, the, the ship sh breaker cracking, the oh, big yeah. one? Yeah, oh, yeah. You definitely <laughs> you, break shit. Well, you know, you, uh, you, you did well to fill in the role with the Aborn Overlord. That guy yeah. also does some breaking of his own. Well, I mean, it was a little bit suspect, though, because I only had not that many black cards in my deck. I think I maybe had three black permanents. It was a, it was a real, real funny draft. Oh, um, uh, okay. There were a couple picks, maybe one or two, that I wish I could get over. But uh, aside from that... Uh, you know, I, I started out picking the Green God. Uh, from there, it was just a, a free-for-all, a little bit of a debacle. I, I didn't recognize many people in there. The, the guy that, John, that I just played, I played him in uh, uh, today. But uh, other than that, I didn't really recognize anybody. Okay. Um, before I let you go, what was the best card for you over the course of the weekend? First thing that comes to mind. Well... The first, I mean, the first and only thing that comes to mind is, is the Kraken. Mm -hmm. uh, I had them in my sealed deck along with some other rares. Um, I had two of them in my first draft today, so thanks whoever made those packs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you had three until this last draft, and then you, you managed to make do without it. No, no, I have four. You there was three four. drafts today, dude. <laughs> I had one yesterday, uh -huh. two the first draft, and one... The, second draft today <laughs> and then i just got unlucky and didn't open one yeah no My that's that's draft. too bad you managed yeah, to know. pull it out without know, it <laughs> all right pierre congratulations man Thank you're the you. champion here in oklahoma city great work Guys, we're done. Thanks to my baby. She had a dream that I would win. All right. Hey, there you go. That's that's what it takes. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us here for the webcast. <laughs> it, is, uh, it has been a heck of a weekend here from Oklahoma City. We really appreciate you hanging in there with us, watching Theros Limited. For Rashad Miller, for JVL, for our text coverage team, I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. We'll see you guys in Dublin.